Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome co-founder of AWE, Ori Inbar. Good morning and welcome to AWE 2017. Thank you for coming, guys. Wow, I am in awe. Are you guys in awe? No, seriously, are you in awe? Yeah. Fantastic. It's great to be hosting AWE for the eighth year. Yeah. Thank you. This is how it all started on this very stage back in 2010. And you can see how far back the inspiration goes for our superheroes. It's hard to imagine that this was so long ago, right? So for those who can't believe it, is there anyone in the audience who has was, was been here at this very theater in 2010? Anyone? Come on, stand up, guys. Stand up. Stand up. And take a bow. See, these guys are the crazies, I mean the pioneers. And I want to officially welcome you guys to the AWE Eight Timers Club. Congrats. So a year before AWE in 2010, I went on a stage in Graz University and made this insane prediction. It was my first AR presentation ever, but I had a vision, and I said, in 10 years, everyone will use augmented reality to experience reality in a more meaningful way. In 10 years, that would be 2019, a year depicted in science fiction with movies such as Blade Runner, Akira, Heat Seeker, you know this one? The Road, and of course, Dopo la caduta di New York. <laughs> All dystopia galore, which can only be avoided if everyone uses augmented reality to experience reality in a more meaningful way. That was the, the vision back then. And the mission became to nurture and accelerate a healthy industry through collaboration and education. And thus, augmentedreality.org was born, a nonprofit to help advance AR and later VR. And over, over time, we re refined the goal to a moonshot of 1 billion users by the end of the decade. And then, of course, AWE came to life and grew exponentially to nearly 10,000 attendees this year across three continents. So I think you'll agree the mission is well on its way. But how soon will it happen? When will everyone use augmented reality and virtual reality to experience reality in a more meaningful way? Well, with, with your support, I think we have a really good chance. After all, you here in this room are the Avengers. And it seems like so far, you're all doing a damn good job. Speaking of cartoons, DigiCapital predicts that mobile AR will top 1 billion users by 2021. And they also declare the war on mobile AR has begun. And the big players are vying for dominance. But I think what's even more interesting, and sometimes the media tends to ignore it, is that is the upstarts. They will define this new wave. And check this out. 350 companies on the AR landscape we recently published. And even more VR companies on this VR list from the VR fund, that tip, thanks to Tipatat. Um, the ecosystem is thriving. And I think it's all happening right now. And this week, for three days, we are all in awe with the opportunity to meet 5,000 like-minded professionals. So who are these folks here? 
The three key groups that we are bringing together are startups, corporations, and investors. The golden triangle that drives the economy of this industry. And we've tailored the programs for each one of these audiences. But the fuel is the developers, the engineers, the producers, the designers, which really make this whole thing happen. And on top of that, we amplify, to amplify the amazing progress of this industry, we've assembled over 300 journalists who will be here this week. Most people you'll find here um, are startups. Any startups in the audience? Come on, make some noise. Awesome. The Fortune 1000 companies looking for AR and VR solutions is the fastest growing group. Any Fortune 1000 companies in the audience? Come on, make some noise. How about some women? Do we have women in the audience? Yes, women are strong in awe. And to help you find the people that you need to meet, we brought you speed networking. So what roles are you going to find here? A big chunk is going to be C-level and executives, decision makers, along with a great mix of creative, technical, and management, all influentials in their companies. And that mix was our guiding light in crafting the agenda for you this year a track catering for each one of these audiences. And special thanks to Area for organizing the work track, which is one of the most popular this year. And we also are super proud to have the Virtual World Society uh, joining us this year. And they are running a track fully dedicated for VR for good. That will take place on June 2nd. So now you know who's here. But what's our purpose here? We know the next computing wave is coming, and it will be bigger than anything else that came before it, because it's much more natural than anything before it. And it makes us humans better at anything we do, gives superpowers to the people. Yes, I know we've been obsessed with this idea for a few years, but it's true. You can master skills instantly, like super fast technicians that have limitless knowledge. You can manipulate things like designers with telekinesis powers, or have body powers like athletes that constantly improve their performance, and mind powers like retailers that can read their customers' mind, and even superhuman abilities like nurses with X-ray vision that can see your veins under the skin. This year, more and more people are starting to get a taste of these superpowers, and they want more. But some are raising concerns about the implications of these superpowers. Ray Kurzweil has an iconic quote about this. By the way, whatever he's doing to extend his life seems to be working. This is a photo from two years ago. This is him now. I don't know, it might be the hair. Anyway, to the people concerned with the use of these superpowers, he says, every technology since fire has intertwined promise and peril. So I ask you guys, the Avengers, what do you choose, promise or peril? Seriously, what do you choose? We choose promise. Let's use these superpowers to change the world. Seriously, humanity is facing big growing pains. Overpopulation, globalization challenges, inequality, lack of empathy, and of course, dopo la caduta di New York. <laughs> but we can fight these dystopian outcomes Augmented and virtual reality can help democratize access to knowledge. Anyone, anywhere, can have access to the world's best information resources and experts right there in their field of view. AR and VR can help 
drive economic growth by improving human productivity and efficiency and safety and helping upskill workers whose jobs have been commoditized by automation. And with AR and VR, healthcare experts using intelligent computer vision can treat patients in remote areas and lift health levels across the world. And with AR and VR, like-minded fo folks around the world can collaborate to solve issues as if they're in the same room. It allows to communicate emotions more effectively among team members and increase empathy. And finally, thanks to AR and VR's ability to simulate things, we don't have to build so much stuff anymore. We can reduce energy consumption and promote sustainability. And here, this week in awe, we have great examples of the beginning of these, of these promises. And by the way, sustainability is not about protecting the environment. Earth is fine. It will be here long after humans are gone. But it's about protecting our future. Neil Harbison, you know, the first cyborg, born colorblind and implanted a an antenna in the back of his head so he can hear colors, says, we should design ourselves instead of designing the environment. And I concur. If you think about it, what's humanity's number one skill? Boo. Gotcha. <laughs> now, what, what really sets us apart from all living things in our incredible ability? It's, it's really our incredible ability to adapt from the tallest mountains to the depth of the sea to deserts and the arctics. Humans were amazing at adapting. And now, we're about to take matters into our own hands. Harari pontificates in his book, Homo Deus, that we'll have to use bioengineering to transform into the next species. And it's probably inevitable, right? Kurzweil predicts, wait, he looks even younger than two minutes ago. <laughs> he predicts that by the 2030s, we'll connect our neocortex to the cloud. And Elon Musk says, we have to use bioengineering or machines will make us obsolete by the time we we are hit by a singularity. So in the meantime, before we become cyborgs, we need a little more augmented reality and virtual reality. So I'm asking the tech gods, gods of tech. I stand here before the best crowd in tech, in the tech kingdom, and I ask you, give us a couple more decades with wearables, with AR and VR, allow us to gradually evolve through our natural senses by augment augmenting ourselves externally. So gods of tech, let us enjoy AR and VR, say until 2030? How does that sound? Too far, maybe 2029? I think 2029 sounds good, deal. And this summarizes the reason why we're all here. So that everyone use AR and VR to experience reality in a more meaningful way. And with you, as the Avengers, nothing can stop us in changing the world. And remember, it's about knowledge, economic growth, health, empathy, and sustainability to the people. So before I let you go and change the world, I want to thank you. And I want to thank all participating companies in awe who are exhibiting and speaking. What an amazing collection of companies. But what's really special is the number of Fortune 1000 companies here speaking about how they're using this tech and adopting it. You can see how it will soon impact any and every aspect of life. And how about our 350 
amazing speakers. Give it up. They come here to share their experiences so we can all get a head start. And a million thanks to our sponsors who support us every year, without whom this event wouldn't be possible. Thank our sponsors. And I want to also give big thanks to our event partners who collaborate with us in spreading the world across communities all over the world. And finally, put your hands together for the amazing team that put together this event, along with a record number of almost 200 volunteers. Give it up to the super friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's go change the world. Have a great show. Thank you.